Hello everybody, welcome back. I'm Matt, and thank you for stopping by the channel. Now, this next pattern in our soft hackle series is a fairly old pattern created in the early 1900s. It's called the Grenadier. Now, what is a Grenadier? It's just a soldier who throws grenades. Now, the guy who came up with this pattern is Dr. Howard Alexander Bell from Rington. Now, if you've ever heard of that, I never had until researching this, it's in North Somerset, England. He came up with this pattern to fish on the Blagdon Reservoir. Now, there's actually a biography on Dr. Bell. They call him the pioneer of reservoir fly fishing. So we know he came up with this pattern to fish in Stillwater reservoirs, but there's no reason this can't be fished, uh, you know, in American trout streams. It's just a, a fairly standard soft hackle wet fly. Now, there is one kind of tricky part about this. The original was dubbed with seal fur, if you've ever used seal fur, you'll know it's kind of tricky, kind of difficult to work with. Now, I'm going to be tying this one today with seal fur, so you'll see how challenging it can be. Now, if you don't have that, just use wool. Just use an orange or a red wool. It will probably fish exactly the same, but I'm tying it with seal's fur just so you can kind of see, you know, what it's like to use and, and how challenging it can be. So, oh, before I forget, if you did enter to win the Great Smoky Mountain Dry Fly Material Bundle, stick around to the end, we'll be doing that drawing. So, let's get into tonight's fly, the Grenadier. So there you go, in the vise, the Grenadier. Now, I'm tying this on a size 14. The pattern book I see says a 12 or 14 are the common sizes. I'm using a competition nymph hook, it's actually a 1X short. You could certainly tie this on a standard nymph hook, but I think this one looked just a bit better. So I'll put a base of 70 denier in black. You could also use brown, but take it well beyond the bend of the hook or maybe where the barb would be if this was a barbed hook. Now for the rib, I'm using one size bigger. You know, the pictures of this I've seen have had a pretty big rib and you could use silver or gold. I'm using silver. I think silver stands out nicely against this red or orange underbody that you do. So just catch this in toward the back. I'm going to have a little lump. See a little step down there between the this tinsel and then the body. You could try to smooth this out a little bit. It's not that important because the body itself is quite big and buggy. So put some wax down. Now, take your seal, red or orange seal fur. Now this is some hard stuff to work with. See that? If you don't have seal, and a lot of people probably don't, just use some wool. You could even use wool floss. You'll see how hard this seal is to dub on here. I've got a good bit of wax on my thread too, and it's hard to get a, a tight noodle with this but that's okay, and it's one of the reasons we use the oversized rib. So just get a noodle about as tight as you can, and take a few wraps until I'm starting to lay down some dubbing. Now I can spin this noodle just a little bit tighter. Now take it all the way up to the front where we're gonna tie in our hackle. Now build a taper if you can. Okay, see I told you that's a big buggy mess, but don't sweat it. We've got this big fat rib we're gonna put around it. And it's, you don't have to put it too tight, these turns. I mean, they're tight, but not too close together. So maybe on this size 14, I think you can get four wraps. It will look pretty good, and it will really lock all these loose fibers in. Now just catch this off up here at the front. Leave some room for your hackle. It's not a big hackle, but we do have to make three or four wraps of it. So get that tinsel caught in, snipped off. Now the hackle on this, it's a furnace color. You could use uh, 
I guess a badger color as well, but you want the, the dark fibers mixed with the, the lighter brown. So I'm just going to pull it back, get a good tie-in point right here. Got that, see that kind of V-notch? Now I'm going to catch this in right, right up here at the head. Two turns maybe, and then we'll do a couple more turns after we fold it back over on itself. Okay, now I've already broke that tip off, so hopefully this is caught in there enough. We'll see if it is. I think it is. It's got a good four or five turns on it. So if, grab your hackle pliers if you need them. I may not need them. I've got about two inches of a feather here to work with. I'm just going to preen these back and then get probably about three wraps of this hackle. So it's, it's not real thick, but then it's not terribly sparse. So I think that looks like three right there. So I'm going to catch this off with a couple of wraps up here behind the eye. And now we can snip this excess off right here. It's going to look like a big spider for a minute or so here. That's a big, big messy looking hackle right there. I'm going to go ahead and zigzag one more through there before I before I push them back and just try to get them all in the back now I'm going to take my thread right back behind the eye and then build a ramp just ramp it right on back and don't worry about going too far back you actually want to go kind of far back on this head so that your fibers are laying swept back so it doesn't look at all like a spider it looks more like a just a whatever you call this the swept back wet fly look right there i think we've got some room for our whip finish you might want to reorient it in the vise right there and a four or five turn should suffice on this, give you some room for uh, your head cement. And if we got a little cleanup, now will be the time to do that. I've got, uh, I'm going to pluck a couple of these long ones out right here, and I've got just a little bit of that seal fur coming out the front right there. And we got a big old buggy looking grenadier. So that's it folks. Pretty easy pattern to tie. And the buggier it is, the more effective it can be. So that's all my friends. I appreciate you watching. Take care and we'll see you next time. All right, folks, thanks for sticking around. We are about to do the drawing for the Great Smoky Mountain Dry Fly Material Bundle. You can tell we've got 65 entries here, starting with George. He was the first one when we opened up the contest two weeks ago. 64 names later, we got Ian and Terry. They got theirs in just under the wire this afternoon. So let's do this. Let's go to the drawing screen. All I've got to do is click one button, and it's going to randomly uh, pluck out one of those names and put it right here. So let's do a, a quick drum roll and countdown. Three, two, one. And Clyde Lee. Clyde is the winner this time. I do recognize this name. Clyde has commented on a few of our videos in the past. So congratulations, Clyde. Send me an email with your mailing address, and I'll get this box in the mail to you, if not this afternoon, and then at least tomorrow. So that's it, my friends. If you didn't win, hey, don't worry. Stick around. December is not too far off. The December giveaway is a Montana Mongoose rotary vise. This thing is pretty awesome. I'll be doing a review on it probably around December 1st. That's a $230 vise. We'll be giving that one away. So, you know, tune in to that video. Um, it's going to be a fun one. So that's it, everybody. I really appreciate the support. I uh, appreciate you watching and commenting on all the, the videos you do. Uh, it really means a lot to me. So take care, everybody. We'll see you next time.